Hey, welcome to the Dangerous Maybe. I'm Mikey, and uh, today I want to talk about Lacan's essay called The Mirror Stage. Um, it's a particularly influential essay. I would say it's probably the fundamental text of Lacanian psychoanalysis, and um, contains a lot of original insights into the nature of the human subject, or in this case specifically the human ego, and how the ego itself is not something that's intrinsic in consciousness. Um, Lacan early on in the essay wants to separate himself from Cartesianism. He wants to say that essentially Descartes was full of shit and the ego is not something that's intrinsic in consciousness from its inception. The ego is something that's formulated, formulated over a period of time. Uh, he wants to say that it's derived, that the ego isn't immediate. Alright, so the full title of this essay is The Mere Stage as Formative of the I Function as Revealed in Psychoanalytic Experience. But we're going to refer to the essay as The Mere Stage for short. So there's four major influences on Lacan in this early essay. Uh, one of them is the phenomenological tradition, uh, especially John Paul Sartre's distinction of self-consciousness and the ego. Uh, Sartre made this distinction in uh, his book Transcendence of the Ego. Um, the other, another influence is experimental psychology, especially the work of Henri Wallen. Um, Wallen focused on the concept of mirroring and developed that, and Lacan took that and ran with it. Uh, another uh, influence is ethology. Uh, Roger K. Waugh, uh, his work on mimicry in insects. And uh, Hegelianism is the fourth major influence. Alexander Kojev's work on desire and recognition, especially in the master-slave dialectic, was especially important in this essay. So, as we work through the text, we're going to see how these different ideas are incorporated in Lacan's own work. So, in this essay, Lacan wants to say that around between the ages of six months and eight months of age, a human infant will, at some point, uh, or many at many points, encounter its own image in a mirror. And this reflection, uh, this specular image, as Lacan calls it, he also refers to it as the imago, uh, is uh, particularly important in the development of the human being and the human subject. And the idea is that a human baby is fragmented. It doesn't have a unified sense of self as a baby. And it's only through perceiving this image of itself in the mirror, this unified uh, sensory perception, that it derives the notion of unity, uh, derives the notion of a unified self. And so the ego is derived from the mirror image. And uh, what's, in, what's important about this, again, is that um, the ego then is an imaginary construct. It's a fictional construct. We never truly are a unified sinner self like Descartes would have had us believe. At this stage, when the baby's encountering itself and uh, deriving a sense of uh, unity, it corresponds to Freud's stage of primary narcissism. Uh, so there's a connection between Freud here and Lacan's work, which there's always a connection between Freud and Lacan. Lacan's whole project was basically the, uh, taking Freud's fundamental insights and rethinking them, developing them in a fuller, fuller way. Uh, another essential thing to understand is that it doesn't have to be a literal mirror for Lacan. Uh, the first mirror would actually be the gaze of its mother, its mother's gaze. Uh, in, in a certain way, a mother's loving gaze gives a baby a sense of connection. A, 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 it's a flicker of unity, almost. Uh, so, we could say that there's, there's really two mirrors in, in the mirror stage. First is the proto-mirror of the mother's gaze, and the second is an actual mirror the actual experience of your body uh, in the mirror. The human gaze has, you know, been traditionally understood as a kind of mirror. We, in, in the other's gaze, we see things about ourselves that are hidden to us that we don't either want to see or we can't see. And so the mother's loving gaze, as, it, as she's holding her infant, 
in a sense, gives the baby a kind of proto-unity. Uh, but the full sense of unity, the, the full sense of totality that the baby eventually comes to have is primarily derived from the imago, the specular image, in the mirror. Alright, so this encounter the baby has with its own image in the mirror has great consequences. It uh, goes on to structure the type of being the baby becomes. It uh, goes on to shape who we are as uh, human beings. And there's some key things to understand about this interaction or this confrontation. The first is that while we identify with the image in the mirror, it's actually not us. We're not the, we're not the image. The image itself is an other. So in identifying ourselves and getting a sense of unity in ourselves, it's borrowed from something that we're actually not. So in this very act of identification with our own image, we in turn dialectically, uh, as Hegel would put it, are simultaneously alienated from ourselves, which is to say our identification with ourselves is actually an alienation from ourselves. Here we can see the Hegelian influence on Lacan's thinking in this particular essay. Uh, the mere stage is a dialectic to speak in Hegelian terms, and a dialectic for Hegel is, um, he didn't use this terminology, uh, but the ideas are there in Hegel, where you start with a thesis, and that thesis contains its own negation, its own antithesis, and then that antithesis itself contains its own negation, which is the negation of the negation, uh, which becomes a synthesis, and the synthesis in turn is a new thesis, and so this dialect, dialectical process just goes on and on and on. So, the classic example of the Hegelian dialectic is from Hegel's uh, massive work, The Science of Logic, and the idea is starts with being, that the immediate for Hegel is being itself, pure being, but when you actually think about being, without any determination, being is nothing, and yet nothing, conceptually speaking, is the opposite of pure being, so you have pure being, and intrinsic to pure being, you have pure nothing, and yet they move back and forth, and this movement back and forth between pure being and pure nothing is what gives rise to the synthesis becoming. And becoming is the play of pure being and pure difference. And that's a classic example of a Hegelian dialectic where you start with a thesis, you move to the intrinsic antithesis, and then you end up at a synthesis of the, the, the two, and the process just goes on. But the idea here is that you have the identification and then this identification gives rise to an alienation, and yet, in a sense, they're, they both are contained in the formation of the ego, the, the, the formation of the I function in the human beings, where we're both simultaneously uh, identified with ourselves and yet alienated from ourselves. Okay, you have the image, and the, the ego is derived from it, but the ego is kind of this synthesis, in a sense, of identification and alienation. Like, I have this identified image of myself now, but I'm alienated from myself by having that. Because I'm not really an ego. I'm not really a self-centered, in, in the philosophical sense of being self-centered. Uh, I'm not a self-centered ego that can exist, that exists intrinsically in consciousness alone. Um, I am, I am a fragmented being. You get into the you kind of have this notion of the Nietzschean self, the multiplicity of drives, um, and that the, you know, Nietzsche believed that it was language itself, the word I, that gave us a sense of uh, totality, of wholeness. And um, so in identifying ourselves as a whole being, a gestalt, we are alienated from ourselves through that falsification of ourselves. So the mere stage is significant for a number of reasons. One, uh, our entire life is, is going to be based on this experience we have with our image in the mirror. And in doing so, this, this encounter with our mirror image, it acts as an ontological structure. Our whole identity of ourselves is based on this, 
but the identity itself is a type of uh, fiction. It's a type of an imaginary unity. And this has great consequences, and these, ex these consequences get expanded once we enter into what Lacan would call the symbolic order with language and uh, social customs, rules, laws, all this type of stuff. And so right now we're just in the imaginary order. Lacan has what he calls three orders, the imaginary, the symbolic, and the real. And uh, all the stuff in the mirror stage takes place in the imaginary. We don't get to the symbolic until we uh, go through the Oedipus complex with castration, symbolic castration uh, for Lacan, uh, where we end up learning a language, and then there's, there's all the stuff that Lacan talks about with the phallus, the name of the father, but all of that happens in the symbolic order, and we're not there yet. But we, the, the human being wouldn't arrive at that, wouldn't enter language, if it didn't first go through the imaginary. So the, the mere encounter, the mere image, um, is fundamental to the development of a human being. For Lacan, simply put, the ego is a fiction, the ego is an other. So for me, when I say I, there's something illusory about that. The word I uh, re-emphasizes what I got from my first encounter in the mirror, which is it gives me a sense of wholeness, a sense of unity, when in fact, you know, I'm a biological organism. Uh, it's kind of like the Nietzschean sense of the self where I'm a multiplicity of drives or wills. And my basic, most fundamental ontological truth is that I have no unity. And yet, through language, through perception of the mirror image, I gain a sense of wholeness, I gain, I gain a sense of identity, and yet it's derivative and it's not ontologically uh, the truth of my being. Uh, it's, it's a deception in a certain sense. What he's saying is that any sense that we have of individual identity is something that's made, that's something derived. It's not something intrinsic. We're not born with a, a, a wholeness of self. We're not born with a unity of self. It, in a certain sense, is created. It's a, uh, there's mechanisms in place that allow this uh, sense of self to emerge. So in closing, for Lacan, the self is a fucking lie.